I had a teacher that used to tell me that whenever she erased stuff from the board, she felt like she's erasing stuff from the students' heads as well. So it reminds me of the time of the students. Alright, so the formula for calculating the chi value. The chi value. The last question. <laughs> the chi value the chi value is given by the sum of the difference between the observed minus expected divided by expected in each of these cells. You add the difference between the observed minus the expected divided by the expected value for each of those cells. When you add all these, it is going to give you the current value. What does this mean? This means that when you come to this cell where you have your observed, you are going to say observed minus expected for the same cell divided by expected for this cell. <coughs> the next cell observed minus expected divided by expected. Observed minus expected divided by expected. You see that? Yes. This is why some people tend to put the observed and the expected in the same column just so that you can easily do your work, right? So, using this formula, let us go ahead and calculate the chi value, right? So, let us start with this cell here. What is our chi value? In this case, we start with this. We are going to add the differences, the values that we are actually going to observe, right? So, sorry for that. This has to be squared. And it has to be squared because if you don't square this, it might actually just give you a zero at the end of the day. So, this has to be squared. Now, here we are. The first one, 76 minus 58.3 divided by 58.3. And don't forget to square that difference. This plus the next one here, 49 minus 66.7. Square the difference, divide by 66.7. The next, this one, this one, and that one, it's going to be 48 minus 65.7 divided by 65, by 65.7, square that difference, and finally, this one. It's going to be 93 minus 75.3 square the difference divided by 75, which is the expected, which is the expected, and we will have our chi value at the end of the day. Is this okay? Yes. yes sir. Great. So let's go ahead and work this one out pretty quickly. So let's say 76, 76 minus 58.3. The answer here 
is actually going to be 17.7 right the difference is 17.7 so this squared you have 313.29 then divide by 58 Point three, and your value here is going to be 5.37 whatever, whatever this is the value here this plus the next one right 49 can I have somebody to calculate this one somebody we can trust that they will be accurate with their calculation John can you trust it? Can you trust it? I don't have a head. Oh, okay, fine. Lamech, you can't, right? <laughs> <laughs> Alright, so 49 minus 66.7. is giving me the same value. It's actually minus 17.7. So ultimately, when you calculate these values here, when you calculate these values here, you discover that they will give you the same value. All right? So minus 17.7 multiplied by minus 17.7, you will get minus, you will actually get uh, plus, Three hundred and thirteen point two nine. So the three hundred and thirteen point two nine is the one that you will divide by sixty six point seven. Yes. So the second one is giving a negative number. Yeah, it is. No, it's not. It's going to be you get negative seventeen point seven. Then when you square it, it's your positive number. So, no. This is why you have to square it because if you don't square it there, you might actually end up with it. It's negative 17.7 multiplied by negative 17.7. You get it? Okay, so let's put, let's put the value of our product here. That's one, 300 and... 3.29 as the value of the product there right this is the value that we are going to get when we subtract this and square subtract that and square subtract that and square but we can still demonstrate that for you just so that you are sure so we have this we divide by 66 0.7 and the value here is 4.7 697 which is basically 4.70 plus when you do the same here you will see that you get the same answer 48 minus 65.7 is giving you 17.7 negative 17.7 again you square that one you get this value so here it gives us the same value there right you see that? You do the same thing here. 93 minus 75.3, it's still giving you 17.7. So square this, square this, it's going to give you that value. So what you're simply going to do is you actually divide this value by that to get the value there, this value by that get the value for the last one guys when you subtract 48 minus 65.7 the answer is 17.7 square 17.7 you get this answer divide this answer by that you get the value there yeah so I just didn't want to work out this whole thing because it's giving us the same number 
So 313.29 divided by 65.7 plus so guys there are so many points where you can figure out figure out that you've messed it up from. For example, immediately this starts giving you a different answer then you know you've messed it up somewhere. You know what I mean? So that is another place where you can check it from. It should give you the same answer. So we divide this by that as well to get the last value here. 213.29. Please remember not to just calculate for the first one here and then know that definitely even the other ones it will give me the same answer. And then like, it, it may not be correct just because you would have made an error somewhere. So make sure you actually confirm the values that the difference you're getting here is the same. Then you are sure that you get the same thing out like this. Is that okay? Yes. Yeah. So this divided by 75.3, this gives us 4.16. And therefore, we do simple arithmetic by adding 5.37 plus 4.7 plus 4.77 plus 4.16. The chi value is 19. That's our chi value. Now, this is the chi value that you have calculated. How then do you make your conclusion given your chi value? To make the conclusion, this is what you do. You actually compare your chi value your observed chi value to the critical value. If the chi value is greater than the critical value at your particular alpha, which would most likely be alpha 0 0.05, then you do what? You reject the now hypothesis that there is no association. Chi value larger than the critical value, reject the now hypothesis that there is no association. If the chi value is less than the critical value, fail to reject the now hypothesis. Therefore, it's Chi value greater than chi critical, you reject chi value less than or equal to the critical value fail to reject the now hypothesis. And our now hy hypothesis is that there is no association. So when you look at our situation, 19 is greater than 3.841. So what conclusion do we make at alpha equal to 0 0.05? What conclusion do we make? We reject the now hypothesis that there is no association between HIV exposure and sepsis. Is it? Yes. On the other hand, if the chi value that we had calculated is less than 3.841, we fail to reject the now hypothesis 
that there is no association. We will have actually said that there is no association between HIV exposure and sepsis. So guys, this is how you work it out. Any questions?